Okay, so the one extra piece that I want to review is what happens in the sum of the forces question when a force is acting at an angle. Okay, so I have a box, maybe it's 50 kilograms, and instead of pushing or pulling with a horizontal force, I'm going to pull with the force upward, and I'll make this force upward maybe 60 newtons. Okay, so not a big force. And the force upward is acting at an angle of, let's say, 30 degrees. Fg is still acting down. Fn is still acting up. Friction is still acting backward. And we're going to say friction is like 0.1. I better not make it very big because that 60 newtons isn't very big. Um, and the question would be then, what's the acceleration of the box? Okay, so we're still going to do some of the forces in the x and some of the forces in the y, except this f isn't going in the x or the y. So the first thing we need to do is find its components. So fx and fy. And if you remember from grade 11, whenever it says a force is pulling at an angle, it'll be upward. If it says pushing at an angle, it'll be going down. So this one would say pulling at an angle of 30 degrees, okay? All right, so you still start in the same spot. You still start with some of the forces in the Y. And this box is still not moving in the Y. It's just that this time you have an Fn going up and an Fg going down and an Fy going up. So it's going to be positive equals zero. You're still trying to solve for Fn. So you're still going to get it by itself alone by taking the other two terms over. Okay, so it'll become Fg minus Fy. But what is Fg really? It's Mg. And what is Fy really? When we look at the triangle, it's the opposite side. So it should be, and if you need to, you could go and say, okay, it's going to be sine theta equal to Fy over F, and then you rearrange for Fy, and it'll be F sine theta. Okay? Now you could find a value for this because you have everything. So if you were to do that, and maybe for this first one I will, so 50 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, so 490.5 minus 60 newtons times the sine of 30. That's the other reason I'm doing it because this works out to be just 30. So your Fn becomes 460. I think I did that right, 0 0.5, 490, yep. Newtons. Just had to double check it in my head. Okay? And so once you have your Fn, or once you have your expression for Fn, if you stopped here, then you're going to do some of the forces in the x. And in the x direction, you have, oh, sorry, equal to mAx. In the x direction, you have Fx minus friction. equal to MAX. And if you remember, there were always people in grade 11 that want to put this F in, but this F doesn't go in. Once you find its two components, it no longer plays a role. It shows up in the components, but you can't put it in the sum of the forces in the X or the sum of the forces in the Y because it's not going in the X or the Y. It's going at an angle, but part of it is going in the X, and so we put that part here. And part of it is going in the Y, so we put that part here. Okay, so we're breaking it into its components and just looking at the part that's going in the appropriate spot. So what is Fx? It's the adjacent side, so it should be F cos theta. And what is friction? It's mu Fn equal to mAx. And what are we trying to solve for? A, so we're going to divide both sides by M, so it'll be F cos theta minus mu, and if you hadn't filled your numbers in, then you would do brackets, mg minus f sine theta. Close the brackets, and then divide by m. And now fill in your numbers. So ax equals f is 60 newtons, cos of 30, minus mu is 0.1. And just to save time, since I already found the number, and we are on a 10-minute time limit here, 460.5 newtons, so you would fill in all these numbers up here. So this will end up being 46.5 newtons, 
and this ends up being 51.96 newtons. Whoops, don't forget to divide by A, or M, and M is 50 newtons. So on the top, you're going to have, um, what is that, 5 point something? I guess I could do this. 0 over 50. AX ended up being 0 0.11823 meters per second squared. Okay, remember these? The other option would be you're pushing a box, and I'm just going to, we won't do a full question, but you're pushing a box at an angle. If you see the word pushing, it goes downward. And always, 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 the angle is always given with respect to the X. So if you're pushing with a force of maybe 100 newtons, maybe the angle is 60 degrees, this will be your Fx, this will be your Fy. You'll still have an Fg going down, an Fn going up, and a friction, of course, going backward. This time when you do the sum of the forces in the y direction, still going to be 0, but it'll be Fn minus Fg, and this time the Fy is going down, so minus Fy. Still looking for an expression for Fn, so it'll equal Mg plus Fy. What's Mg? Fg, excuse me, it's Mg. What's Fy? It's the opposite side, so it should be F sine theta. So it looks very similar to the earlier one, except up here it was minus because you were pulling up. Here it's plus because you're pushing down, and then you take it across the equals. Go to the sum of the forces in the x direction. Nothing changes. So it'll be Fx minus friction equals Max. Fx is F cos theta minus mu Fn. So it looks identical to when you're, this one does for when you're pulling up. So it's only a change in the y direction. Okay, so I'd like you to use the rest of what would be left in class time today uh, to work on this sheet. Number um, 7 is not a force is at an angle, but 8, 9, 10 are. I would think in the rest of class time you should be able to get those ones done. So how about going maybe to 12? Would that be okay? And if you get stuck or whatever, don't stress. We'll go over them when I see you again. Okay, so 7 to 12. If that's too much, just say in the messenger group, Sister K, you gave us too many, they're too hard. I'm just thinking that you remember them, but you might be thinking, no way, I don't. Okay, so I'm suggesting um, 7 to 12, but you can let me know if that's too much. Okay, thanks.